in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about two things, the problem and the solution. The problem is called creep and the solution is called drift. Let me show you what drift is first. In a previous tutorial, I talked about the shelf, which is imagine you've got a flat shelf around your casting position here and that your arm on the back cast scribes along that shelf, whether it's up here or whether it's down there. And I mentioned that at the very end of the shelf, sometimes we drift off it. This movement here, let me show you. Here's my back cast, here's the shelf, and then here's this sort of up and out movement. It's like a sort of banana shape. Bump, up and back, up and back. I scribe this half moon banana shape behind me. And what it's doing is there's the stop. The line's traveling behind me, but I'm following the line back and letting it extend fully. It might be a very long line and I'm trying to give it more time for it to extend. We want to increase our stroke length. It's a long line, so I'm reaching back and I'm lift keeping the line up off the ground. I'm preparing for the forward delivery. Here it is again. Stop, unrolling, it's a long line drifting back, lifting up to keep that line off the ground and preparing for the forward delivery. Come back forward, come back onto the shelf and close the forward delivery gap on the forward delivery to create that tight loop. Drift, let me show you it in real time. Okay, I'm gonna create a very short cast and feed line into that false cast. I've got, what, 20 foot of line out the tip. I'm not going to need to drift here because it's not a very long line at the tip. There you go. My elbow stays completely on the shelf, no problem. Closing that angle on the forward delivery, creating that angle on the back cast. Creating that triangle above my head, keeping that crossbar high. Now I'm going to extend the line into the false cast. There you go, five feet, 10 feet, a bit more, and I know that I'm gonna to have to increase my stroke length. The rod tips moving further on the back cast, further on the forward cast. Now, I'm gonna to have to do something else because my arm feels sort of pinned to my body and it feels uncomfortable and it feels like I'm gonna run out of stroke length. So I'm gonna lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. It's transformed the cast, lift it up, lift it up. I'm feeding more line into the false cast. I've got a lot of line out the tip. I've got 34 feet of line. I started with 20 foot. I've got 34, 36 feet of line out the tip. And now I'm using a lot of drift. Why? It's still unrolling. The line behind me is still unrolling. I'm buying time, lift it up, buying time. Lift it up, buy time. Lift it up, buy time to smoothly stroke out about 36 feet of line I had out of the tip when I fired that forward delivery. I started with about 20 foot. So I used drift to increase my stroke length. You know when you go to the fun fair and you see a rubber duck and you get a stick with a hook on it? Drift is like when you're trying to reach for the duck, reach for the duck, reach for the duck. You have to wait until you actually hook that hook onto the ring of the duck and then you can drag the duck back. Hooking a duck and that's what I'm doing with the drift. I'm waiting for the loop of line to just unroll, not fully unroll because that's too late, just about there, just as, about, as it's about to do that. I'm waiting for that movement. If I go before then, it's gonna whip crack. If I go too late after it's unrolled, it's gonna fall on the floor. So the drift is a bit like waiting, reaching to hook the duck until just at the right time, I can make the forward delivery. 